in ultrasound physics, we want to be familiar with graphs, and we need to know that this is the x-axis which runs horizontally, and this is the y-axis which runs vertically. Different relationships include directly related, inversely related, and unrelated. So an example of something that is directly related could be calorie intake and weight, because the more calories you take, the more that you will gain, and that can be represented in the green line. An example of something that is inversely related could be alcohol intake and sobriety. So the more alcohol you ingest, the less sober that you are, and that would be represented by the red line. And unrelated is simply something that has no correlation with each other, such as IQ and shoe size. What I want to memorize is the metric system. I highlighted all of the first letters because you can uh, create a sentence that'll make it easy for you to memorize. I want to keep in mind the exponents. Deca starts with one, and then I just do think one, two, three, six, nine, and then it's the opposite way. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative six, and negative one. Um, so waves transfer energy from one place to another. Sound is a mechanical wave. Sound is a series of compressions and rarefactions. Sound travels in a straight line and sound waves are longitudinal waves. Pressure, density, and distance are acoustic variables and they show up a lot, so you wanna remember their units. Pressure is Pascal's, abbreviated PA. Density, kg over centimeters cubed. And distance could be any form like centimeters or millimeters. Okay, so next you wanna know the difference between acoustic propagation properties versus biological effects. Acoustic propagation properties are the effects of the medium upon the sound wave and biological effects are the effects of the sound wave upon the biological tissue through which it passes. Here we have basic math and here is PEMDAS which is broken down into parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. People can memorize it as, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, so if you have a math problem that involves any of these, you wanna go in the order of parentheses first and exponents and multiplication and division. It depends which one comes first in the equation and same with subtraction. So here we have two plus five minus three. So here, addition or subtraction, whichever comes first. So you would do two plus five, which equals seven minus three, and then you get your answer four. And then this one, you do multiplication first because it comes before addition. Five times three is 15 plus two is 17. And then the last one, you do parentheses first, two plus five, seven times three, and then you get your answer 21. Here we have exponents where you multiply the big number as many times as the little number tells you to. So in the first one, it's two squared, so you do two times two, and that equals four. And in the last one, it's three cubed, so you do three times three times three, and that equals 27. Here we have negative exponents. So what we do here is use the reciprocal of the big number and put a one over it. So. For two, you put one over two, and for five here, you put one over five. And the same idea, you take the little number and you use it that many times. So here's negative three, so you do it three times. Here's negative five, so you do it five times. And once you have your fractions, you just you keep the numerator, and then you multiply the denominators, and that's how you get your answer. You wanna remember that when reciprocals are multiplied, the product is always one. So here we have basic scientific notation, which it is used to simplify a big number. So for example, 1,000 could be simplified into 10 to the third power using the three zeros. 10,000 would be 10 to the fourth power. And here we follow here and go one, two, three, and that's where the decimal is. So it's going to be a negative exponent, 10 to the negative third power. Fractions equal the numerator over the denominator. So if you can have something in fraction form, you should be able to convert it into a decimal and you should be able to convert that into a percentage and vice versa. Waves are a cyclical transfer of energy and some examples are sound, light, x-ray, water, and radio signals. Waves can be classified in either mechanical or electromagnetic. 
If it's mechanical, it needs a medium to travel in. And if it is electromagnetic, it can work in either a medium or a vacuum. Mechanical can be further broken down into longitudinal and transverse. So sound actually travels straight, which would be longitudinal, and transverse is perpendicular. So here we have in-phase and out-of-phase waves. In-phase waves peak at the same exact time as seen above, and they both go up at the same time and down and up and down, and that would be known as constructive. Then out-of-phase, they go in opposite directions, and it results in a deconstructive wave. The time required for the pulse to travel from the transducer and back is called go return time or time of flight. The formulas you want to know for this chapter is speed equals distance over time. Distance of the reflector is equal to propagation speed times one way. And distance equals 1540 meters per second times time. And that is the sound in the body. In soft tissue, every 13 microseconds, of go return time means the reflector is one centimeter deep in the body. So here we have the 13 microsecond rule, which is the time of flight. So when the reflector is going towards the body, it's one centimeter and the total distance would be two because it's coming out one, going in one. Then if the time of flight is 26 microseconds, then the reflector depth would be two centimeters which means the total distance traveled, if it's two centimeters out, two centimeters back, it would be four centimeters.